My brother-in-law called me the one who got away in his speech, and my husband is very hurt, and it's all my fault. Disclaimer, this is not my story. I will list the source in the caption of this video. I don't know what to do. I think I've done some serious damage to my marriage before it even began. I met my husband through his brother, Chris, who I had a crush on in college. I never was clingy, nor did I act on my feelings, and I never really allowed myself to get too close to him because I knew that my feelings weren't reciprocated. Chris knew, however, that I had a crush on him, or at least he felt it. He would always say that I was girlfriend material and how he wouldn't want to lead me on. He wanted to have fun before that. He would say this to others, and even to me once. On two occasions, he would text me that he had feelings for me, only to apologize later and retract his words. But on Christmas four years ago, he texted me that he was in love with me and wanted to take me out on a date. He said he was done playing around and wanted a relationship. He was invited to a New Year's Eve party that my then roommate and I had. He told me that he wanted to talk to me. When he came to the party, he had his brother with him. Chris spent the party going out of his way to ignore me. And later I saw him making out with my roommate and they spent the night in her room. I decided there and then that I will drop it. Enough is enough. Next morning, he told me that he fucked up. I fucked up big time. Yeah. And he apologized. During the party, I got to know his brother, who was the opposite of Chris. He was shy and hated attention, and he was just the best, and soon after, he asked me out on a date. We are married now. Our wedding was last Wednesday. I want to make two things very clear. I never went beyond a crush with Chris, and only after I fell for my husband that I understood what love is. He is everything to me, and I love him more than anything. I never told anyone about my crush, and when I met my husband, I didn't tell him either. Chris wasn't happy I was seeing his brother, and he's been cold towards me since, even when I got serious between my husband and I. Chris even held a speech at a rehearsal dinner, and he basically outed everything out and ended with how he regretted not asking me out sooner and how he will always regret it. It was very awkward afterwards, and nobody talked, and on our wedding, my husband did everything to act normal, and he made sure everything was as planned, but I could feel that he was very hurt and angry. After the party, he asked me if I loved Chris and if I dated him for that reason. I started crying because this was absolutely not true. We started dating and became friends, and I made sure it was him that I wanted to be with. And I never loved anyone like I loved my husband. I told him all of this and more, and I apologized so much for not telling him everything. In the beginning, I thought it was my own private matter, and I didn't feel the need to discuss it with a then stranger to me. When our relationship evolved, I just never thought Chris was relevant, and my crush seemed like a silly thing. Now it's come back to bite me in the ass. My husband is very sad, and he rarely talks to me. I can't turn back time, so I don't know what to do. Am I wrong for telling my brother he is undateable? My brother Bill, 30 male, has been trying online dating for three years, but with no success. We live in a more rural area, so there aren't that many women around his age to begin with. And the ones that are available, Bill did not think they were good enough. So he asked me to edit his Hinge profile so he can attract a mate. I looked it over and damn, his profile was paragraphs of what he's looking for in a woman. Skinny. Q, under 30, average to high income, and lives locally. She must also be into anime and into video games. Mind you, the only picture he has are grainy selfies or pictures with one or both of our parents, mostly our mom. It's also important to know that Bill lives with our parents and has been working as a door greeter at Walmart since he was 18. I told Bill that he doesn't need to overhaul his page. He needs to overhaul his life. I basically told him that no woman meeting his wants would want to date him. Am I wrong for telling my brother that he is undateable? It's important to know that Bill lives with our parents and has been working as a door greeter at Walmart since he was 18. I told Bill that he doesn't need to overhaul his page, he needs to overhaul his life. I said that no woman that meets his wants would want to date an obese 30 year old living off of his parents. Or one working a job that Walmart usually gives to old people to stay busy. Bill completely freaked on me and told her mom and now she's upset because I tried to tear him down when he really just needed my help. So she wants me to apologize, but what is there to apologize for? I just told him what was wrong and that he should consider changing his life if his wants really are his wants. Top comment says you're not wrong. You gave him the help he asked for and he didn't get the help that he wanted, but you gave him true advice. The way his profile currently looks, it looks like he's looking for a sugar mama to take care of him. Am I wrong for telling my sister grieving her dog is not the same as me grieving my husband? To make a long story short, I lost my husband only a month ago. It's hard. I'm still grieving and I miss him every day. I have to take medication for depression and anxiety to help me get through the day. Last week, my sister's dog was put down due to some health issues and she was very upset, which is understandable. She called me as soon as it happened and said I was the only sibling who would understand her pain. I didn't mind. Honestly, I just wanted to comfort her since her dog meant the world to her. She held a wake for him and our whole family attended. It was a nice service. But now, 
she's comparing our losses, telling me she knows exactly what I'm going through, that she can relate to the pain of losing someone so close to you. She calls me asking if we could visit graves together. It was fine the first time, but it's constant. She goes three times a day. It's already difficult to go once a week for me and she knows this. I feel like she's not even considering my own grief process. Anyway, I told her that grieving her dog is not the same as grieving my husband. She's upset and refuses to talk to me now. I get it. It was uncalled for really, but my loss is new to me too and I guess I just got frustrated with how different we're dealing with our losses. I don't know. I feel like she should understand where I'm coming from. A dog is not the same as a husband. A dog can't love you back like a husband can. A dog can't read to your children like a husband can. A dog can't make soup when you're ill like a husband can. It's really hard for me right now to discern when I'm being condescending or not. I don't know if it's a side effect of my medication or if the empathetic part of my brain has shut down, but I'm really getting tired of her comparing our pain when she lost her dog and I lost my world. At the very least, she still has her husband. I have two young children at home processing a loss unimaginable to most kids their age, and she's trying to whisk me away to graveyards to visit her dog. So, am I the asshole? My son stole his dead mother's ring for his girlfriend, and now he won't talk to me after making him return it. To say I was mad as hell would be an understatement. I, 46 male, have a son Jake, 23 male. Jake was a good kid growing up, so him doing this was a complete shock to me. I have a daughter too. Amber 16 female. When my wife passed away from COVID nearly two years ago, she already had a will in place. She was immunocompromised due to a prior condition she was diagnosed with a decade before she passed. And she made sure she had a will set just in case anything happened to her. And instead, she will divide her assets between our children. And Jake got his cut as he was already 21. He used that money to put a down payment on a condo and he also got his mother's car. But the will stated that my daughter was to get all of my wife's jewelry. That included a vintage gold ring with a diamond that had a little blue sapphire on each side of it. The ring has been passed down for generations in my wife's family. It was originally her grandmother's wedding band. Her husband was a jeweler and handcrafted the ring for her himself. And it was passed down to my wife's mother when her grandmother died and then to my wife herself when her mother passed away. Along with it, any and all other jewelry was to go to my daughter. When my wife passed, my grief was intense. But I powered through it for the sake of my family. And they supported me 100%. So the betrayal from my son was just a rusty knife in the back for me. For the past 8 months, Jake has been dating Sarah. She has my son wrapped around her finger and she loves jewelry and she adorns herself with it a lot. My son mentioned the family jewels my wife left his sister to Sarah one day and Sarah really wanted to see them. So Jake went into my room when no one was home and showed them to her. He later admitted to me he'd done this and I was angry but I thought that would be the end of it. I was wrong. Jake came to me a week ago and begged for that ring from his mother's family jewel so that he could propose with it. He said Sarah had fallen in love with the ring when she saw it before and he just knew it'd be the perfect ring to ask her to marry him with. He seemed completely convinced I'd be jumping for joy for him wanting to propose but instead I told him that I was not the one to ask as the ring belongs to Amber and I wouldn't have him pressuring her to give it up either. For a fair chance I'd allowed him to explain his reasons and ask her for it once but only once without pressuring her and if she refuses for any reason that will be the end of it. Jake agreed and asked Amber for the ring right in front of me but she told him no because she wanted to keep it in the family jewels and has always loved that ring. To her it's priceless. She couldn't bear to ever give it up. I told Jake that was that and to not press the matter further. Jake left looking very unhappy about not getting the ring but I thought he'd let it go and look into finding a similar one but he came back another day while I was at work to talk to his sister after she got home from school. He and Amber got into a huge fight about the ring and Amber called me crying. I called Jake and told him to get out of my house and leave his sister alone. Jake yelled at me that he should have just as much right to the ring as his sister because my wife was his mother too but I reminded him he got a lot of his mother's money and her car. The jewelry is Amber's and only hers. He hung up on me and Amber soon texted me that he left very angry. Later, right before I left for work, my daughter called and told me that Jack came back. He walked in dressed in a suit, went into my room and took something, then left without saying anything to Amber. She tried to keep him from leaving, but he shoved her out of the way. I rushed home as soon as my shift was over and checked my wife's jewelry box. The ring was gone. I immediately called Jake, but he didn't answer, so I messaged him that I'll get the police involved if he doesn't return the ring. Using it to propose won't stop me from taking it back. That finally made him talk to me, and he tried to say I couldn't do that to him because he's my son. I said I can and will because he outright stole the ring and he'd better bring it back right away or I would take drastic measures. Well, he phoned me right after that and in a whisper, he said that it was too late. He'd taken his girlfriend out to dinner and proposed to her with the ring. He hadn't had it for more than an hour by this point, yet the ring was already on her finger. I said that was his problem. He stole the ring, he can bring it back. 
it's not his and I will do whatever it takes to make sure it's returned. And if that means going to police and blowing the whole situation up, then so be it. I'll file a report. I'll even get a lawyer. Jake started crying and saying I couldn't do this to him. I told him tough luck. He stole from both his sister and dead mother. I would not back down until the ring was returned. Jake wouldn't stop crying and making excuses. So I told him to have the ring back by morning or I would be moving forward with legal action. Jake is my son, but he still broke the law and I couldn't overlook what he did. He said he'd be in by the morning to talk and ended the call while crying even more. Well, Jake did show up in the morning and brought his girlfriend with him to try and guilt us. Turns out, she not only knew he stole the ring, she wanted to keep it anyway because she was completely in love with the ring since she first laid eyes on it. I told her I didn't care. She could have a jeweler make a copy of it or something, but the original doesn't belong to her. It belongs to my daughter and deceased wife. Jake begged me one more time not to make her give it back, but I and my daughter stood firm. Return the ring or face police and maybe even a potential lawsuit. Jake's girlfriend pulled the ring off her finger and dropped it in my daughter's hand, called me an evil bastard, then left my house in tears. Jake started screaming at me that I may have just destroyed his relationship. I retorted him that he did this to his own relationship by stealing a ring that didn't belong to him. What kind of son steals from his own sister and dead mother? That is beyond terrible. Jake had nothing more to say to me and walked out to follow after his girlfriend. I didn't get anyone else involved in the situation, but Jake did. He tried getting support from friends and family, but he got the exact opposite reaction he'd hoped for. They were all mad at him over what he'd done. I got many phone calls and messages from people offering me condolences and saying they were not on Jake's side. I tried to do damage control, but not everybody knows. It's been a week now and Jake refuses to speak to me. I've sent him detailed pictures of the ring just in case he wanted a jeweler to replicate it. But making a copy would be very expensive unless he used fake stones. And thus far, there has been no response. I don't know what the situation is with his girlfriend, if she even still is his girlfriend after what happened. But I stand by the fact that Jake had to return the ring. I have since had all of my wife's jewelry placed in a safety deposit box that only I have access to. And the jewelry will remain there until my daughter is 21. It may even stay there if she wants to keep it safe that way. I know I'm in the right to have a claim the ring. However, I don't want my son to hate me. And I don't want the family to hate him. If anyone has any advice as to how to better mediate this situation without me giving away the ring or spending lots of money, I'm all ears.